What's going on streamers? Welcome to another streaming tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the alert box in Streamlabs desktop. That way you can get something kind of like that. So let me go ahead and hide this. And what you're going to want to do is go into your sources, click the plus, and we're going to go to alert box. Now alert box will allow you to support donations, subscriptions, follows, bits, hosts, super chats, a whole bunch of different stuff. Depending on where you're streaming, it will change to correlate with that streaming platform. So go ahead and hit add source. And we're gonna do, starting with a new source here, and we'll just give it a name. And you're gonna see something like this. Now this is gonna be your general settings, and then you'll see these down here. You can either disable some by clicking on the little box here, and then you can enable it by clicking on it, clicking on it again. But for the general settings real quick, this is going to be your global alert delay. This will give you the delay for that actual alert. Now for the advanced here, alert parries. This is going to allow new alerts to interrupt the on-screen alerts. So if you don't get spammed with a lot of alerts, then this really isn't going to be too bad. But if you get spammed with a ton of alerts and you want to make people feel you know, special for that, few seconds that their stuff pops up on the screen, I wouldn't do the alert parries. And then of course you have the alert moderation delay. And then down here we'll have your browser settings. So this will be the settings that it's going to always have the same certain width and height for all of your alerts. And then if you know CSS, you can mess with that type of stuff for the refreshing the cache of the current page. This is really good in case you ever run into any issues with any of your alerts. You can always go and refresh this by clicking on it and sometimes it fixes the issue. I do have a video that does go over the uh, ways you can kind of fix your alerts if they don't display and I definitely recommend you guys checking out that video. It's going to be at the very end of this video. It's also going to be in the video description below. So controlling the audio via Streamlabs desktop, you can do that. You can refresh the browser when the scene becomes active. You can shut down the source when it's not visible. That is the most recommended one. And then if you want to use custom frame rates for the alerts, you can do that too. But you don't really have to touch any of this stuff. You can just leave it as it is, but I just wanted to show it to you. The main thing that we're going to want to go into is these. Now, I'm not going to go into all of them. I'm just going to go into one of them. So I'm just going to choose donation. So as you can see, I have it set up to where I have a custom image. I have it to where the layout is. The text will go over the image. You can also have it where the text is underneath the image, or you can have it where it's on the right hand side of the image. You can choose your own custom sounds. If you have them, you got the sound volume. You can give it a certain message if you want it to be something else. And then you can also have a minimum amount to trigger that alert. For this one, it's donation. So you can either have it set to at least someone has to donate a dollar and it will trigger it or people don't have to donate like they can donate like 50 cents and it will still go. If you need to set up your tipping page, it's going to be there. You can also customize your tipping page for your viewers. But for animations, you can choose the duration for that animation. You can have it to where it will fade in or fade out, or you can choose any of these other options that are offered. That way you can make it look unique and fun on the screen. You can have a text delay and you can also have text animations as well, or you can leave it as none. So it does give you some options there. For your font settings, you can choose different types of fonts. And these ones are all provided by Streamlabs. And this way you can try to find one that you like and maybe one that's very close to your own branding or anything like that. So you do have some options there. You can mess with the font size, the font weight, and you can also choose the colors for it too. And then for custom code, this is going to be if you know how to do any of the like CSS, HTML, stuff like that. All right, so once you have everything set up the way you like it, the custom image, the layout, the sounds, all that stuff, then you're gonna wanna go and test it. So go ahead and hit close. 
and you're going to go down here to the bottom right and it's going to show test widgets. So when you click on that, you'll see something like this and we're just going to click on one of them just to make sure they work. And if you're seeing everything here, like when you test all of your alerts and everything, if everything does show up, then you should be fine. But there is one thing I do want to mention. The alert box that is here in Streamlabs desktops, uh, like program and everything, it has majority of everything you're going to need. But there are some features on the actual website in the dashboard that are not here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that too. Okay, so this is going to be your dashboard. So right now I'm on the generals tab and how I got over here was I just signed in, went to alert box and it brings you right here to the generals tab. So there are some things that are not here or that are here that are not on the other ones what I meant. So you have the layout on this one and there's a profanity filter and custom bad words. We don't have that on the other one. In donations, in donations, this is the one we had set up. There's text to speech. We didn't have text to speech on the program. So if you're wanting people to be able to um, type a message and that message come through on the stream and everything, you would use the text to speech option. And you'd be able to have a certain minimum that people have to donate, like say $5, in order for that message to be read. You can choose different voices and there's a spam filter or spam security, sorry. So that way you can keep it family friendly if you want to. You can have a spam repetition block. You'll be able to adjust the volume and include message templates in text to speech. Now, obviously, we did have the minimum that, that would work towards the alert. Minimum amount for recent events. That's new. You'll be able to have the message template, animations, image, music, all that stuff. So that stuff's still there. But you also will have the open donator message settings. This is not over there. So you'll be able to allow emotes. You can have a minimum amount to be shown. Choose a font. All that stuff right there. Then you'll have the open fonts. And you also have alert variations. So alert variations are actually pretty nice. You can have a set for different types of alerts to work for different amounts that people donate. That's a little bit more advanced to go into, but that's an option that's there for you. And all these other ones are going to have their own type of like options. And I would really recommend either setting it up all here and then just taking this link and using it as a browser source. So like if I was to take this link here and hit copy and then if I go into here and where is browser source? There it is. If I was to do the browser source option, if I was to close this one out of the way and then do subscribe, now it's right there. This is the browser source. So you can set up everything on the website that way you have more options, but the downside is you won't be able to go in and adjust it if you did the browser source unless you go back to the website so it's kind of like which one do you want to work with more do you want to work with just a browser source or do you want to work with the alert box and not have all the options if you had if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below but that is everything that i do have about the alert box if you found today's video helpful be sure to go ahead and subscribe click the bell icon let me know if there's anything that I may have missed in the comment section below, that way we can all share the knowledge for everybody. And be sure to go ahead and take a look at the fixes for the alerts. If you're having any trouble with the alerts, that video is right here on the screen. And also, it's going to be in the video description below. But thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you on the next one.